Newsflash, you need to stop practicing self-care. In this episode, we'll talk about what self-care really is, why it doesn't work, why we have evidence of it not working, and most importantly, what to do instead. I'm Daryl Black, and over the last few weeks, or even months for that matter, I have been inundated with conversations around people lacking motivation. This could be friends, this could be clients, this includes myself. Motivation's waning, habits are out the window, routines that used to be kind of steadfast are no longer the case. People are having trouble getting momentum in their personal and professional lives. Revenues are down, productivity is low, and Adam Grant has a, had a phrase called languishing. I think that's a really, really good term. And it's not just because of the last couple of years, but there's been a real increase in dissatisfaction in, at work and at home and, and all of the things that go into living a good life, contributing at work, contributing in the community, all those things. And I think a lot of us have just been in survival mode and, and never mind, I think, I know, just in talking to clients and so on and so forth. And, and like I said, I'm not immune to this either. So I want to introduce to you a, a frame a little bit later on that has helped me and lots and lots of other people that um, I've uh, taught it to. But let's talk about self-care in and of itself. Now, first of all, the activities within self-care are not bad, okay? They're not bad. So when we think of self-care and, and some, we're getting burned out, which is at an all-time high as well, we're like, you know what? You need to practice more self-care. So what does that mean? It means we need to meditate, so practice mindfulness. We need to go in nature, just like I'm doing right now. Go for a, a nice walk. 30 minutes of movement a day, so exercise, improve your nutrition, uh, journal every day, uh, spend time with loved ones, doing joyful activities. The list goes on and on with regard to self-care, and yet the evidence is clear. We are no happier, we are no more fulfilled, we are more stressed out, we're more burned out, we're less motivated, we're all of the negative things, and so think about that. And so in facing that myself, I was wondering, you know, what is the answer? What is the answer to this? Because again, the activities within self-care are in and of themselves not bad. In fact, they're highly recommended. So what's the problem here? It's like the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So I'm like, huh, there's got to be something to this. So I went on a, on a search, went hunting for a solution to my own problem and the problem of my friends and clients and this one I'm sharing with you. And I think it has to do with how we frame self-care. The framing of it is not working for all of us. Yes, for some it certainly does. You wake up in the morning, you do your downward dog and all that other stuff. But for a big bunch of the population, it doesn't work. So why doesn't self-care work for everybody? I have a few theories. One is a lot of the people that need self-care the most are those that are the most driven and the most results oriented and the most action oriented. So asking them to slow down, asking you to slow down and, and smell the roses is just really counterintuitive. Another reason is consistency. Sure, we walk the dog, we spend time with kids, which actually could be a stressor. We meditate, we journal, we express gratitude, we do all the things, but it's the consistency of the practice that we're lacking. So again, it's maybe not the activity, but it's how we apply it. So that's another reason self-care doesn't work. Another reason is that we have a real difficulty as human beings resting or quieting what we call our monkey mind. And that is where meditation is tremendously helpful. I've meditated for years. But for a lot of people, it is something that is extremely difficult to do. And even when you sit down to do it, it's like, man, that is just way too hard. And therefore, you don't get instant results. And so, boom you bounce on to the next self-care activity. So I want to introduce you to a concept called active recovery, which is exactly that, although it does sound counterintuitive or paradoxical, actively recovering. So if you think about the amount of work that you have in any given day and the amount of stressors and frustrations that you face, doesn't matter if it's four hours, eight hours, 12, 14, whatever it is, active recovery means it's not about the work, okay? I'll say that again, active recovery, it's not about the work, it's about how you recover from 
those long days, that frustration, that stress in the moment. So I want to give you a couple of examples or a couple of analogies. One is a lion, right? Lion, the, the old desert lion. It is really in two states. It's either hunting or what else is it doing? It's resting. One could argue it's fornicating, but we'll just stick to those two. It's hunting or it's resting. And I've even seen pictures where if a lion is resting, if it's content, there will be wildebeests within 20 or 30 meters of it. And it's like, it does not give two Fs about that wildebeest or that pack of wildebeests out, out there because it's resting. It's not the time to hunt. So it is in one of those two things. So if you think about it from your perspective, even when you're resting, are you truly resting? Are you maybe resting? Sure, you're on the couch, but maybe you have your phone close by. Maybe you're just checking periodically emails. Maybe you're thinking about, okay, so tomorrow morning, this is what I gotta do. And so you're not truly resting, you're not being present. So you're not actively recovering. Another analogy I'd like to introduce to you is, is that of the athlete who's training, say for the Olympics or some sort of world event or, or just a really competitive event. Have you ever wondered why athletes are able to sustain their performance during training to the point where theoretically on race day or, or competition day, they're at their peak? When they've been working their tails off up until that point. Well, the reason being is because an athlete, when they're in true training mode, let's say they're they're training up for the Olympics, they're in two modes, they're training or they're recovering. And they actually see those as two sides of the same coin. In order to perform their best, they have to actively recover. And the better they actively recover, the quicker they can get back to training. And then what you see is just a sustained improvement. So they will be active and then they'll rest. And then they'll be active again and then they'll rest. So it's that it's that ebb and that flow, but it's a highly orchestrated activity. And if you've talked to any athletes, if you've been around any athlete, the quality of the training is really, really important, but equally, if not more important, is how they recover. So ice baths and all of those other things. And so we could take those analogies, the lion and the athlete, we can apply it to our own lives and think like a corporate athlete, if you will. And so now, what am I asking ultimately? Well, really, asking you to change your frame. Just change your frame. Change the language that you approach, quote unquote, self-care. Change it to active recovery. And it's something that's helped me a lot where if I've ever been resting, for example, and I've had a temptation to get up and check email or something like that, I love what I do. I love what I do. I can't get enough of it, but I also recognize that I'm prone to burnout just like anybody else. So if I'm laying down or I'm hanging out with my dudes and being present, and I have that little habitual urge to check my phone, for example, I actually stop it by saying, you know what, dude, you're actively recovering. That's what you're doing. I'm not practicing self-care by being present, which I love, but I don't use those terms anymore. I use the term active recovery. So that in itself is an activity. So to me, it makes a lot of sense. And it's binary, I'm either actively recovering or I'm not. And that has allowed me to be exponentially happier find more joy, get into flow way more often, for sure. And I'll be talking a lot about flow coming up here and really being able to release the day. So I've been working really hard and gearing up for a membership here. And there's information in the description to sign up for the, the membership. I'm blowing the doors wide open. I'm disrupting the industry with my leadership membership. So sign up down there. But there's a lot going on. And one of the downsides of being an entrepreneur is you're always working or you potentially always could be working. So what does it look like to active recovery then or actively recover? I've talked all about self-care and why we should shift the frame to active recovery. What are some things that we can do to actively recover? Well, one caveat right off the bat is that oftentimes the reason we don't get traction with these types of things is because we take on too much too early. So. I'm gonna give you a list of a few things, and here is my, my ask. Choose one, uno, uno. Now I know that the overachieving folks in the audience are like, one, bullshit, I want lots of results. I'm here to tell you, crawl, walk, run. Crawl, walk, run. If you want to sustain high performance and reach optimal peak performance without the burnout, you cannot dive in, so choose one. 
So what are those activities that you could choose from? One is optimize your sleep. This, oh boy, I've done a lot of work. My membership will be talking a lot about sleep, how to really optimize it and to make it the best it can be. So that's one activity. Second is breath work. Breath work is extremely important as well. So there are various techniques that are available. I practice box breathing an awful lot. That's breathe in for four seconds, hold it for four, exhale for four, hold for four. And there are a zillion variations depending if I wanna upregulate, so I wanna get, get more jacked up, or if I wanna downregulate. Or I can do heart-centered breathing if I want to really be centered and now move into a gratitude practice, for example. And that leads me to the third option, and that is practice gratitude. List three things. Journal is ideal, but even just thinking about it, express gratitude for three things each and every day. Now, instead of saying, hey, you know what? I'm really happy about the coffee. I'm happy it's good weather. And speaking of which, it's smoking hot out here. And I'm happy I went to Disneyland last week, which I did with my dude. It was amazing. Actually practice that heart center. Breathe in for a minute, just in and out, in and out and then actually feel the gratitude. That's the critical part. So that's another thing you can do is express get gratitude or get into a gratitude practice. Another one is 30 minutes minimum of movement. Now this does not have to be like CrossFit or Olympian type activity where you're hardcore biking uphill both ways on the way to and from work, you know, that whole thing. It could be something as simple as a brisk walk. And the science is actually really clear that brisk walks are really, really good for your cardiovascular system, which includes improving circulation to your brain. Even in some cases more so than heavy activity because there's less cortisol dropped out. But again, more on that in my membership. So I've given you a list of some things to think about. The caveat is just pick one and stick to it for at least a week, at least a week before you introduce a new one, a week minimum. Okay, so any one of those, and there are so many other things, is get regular hydration, improve your nutrition, maybe intermittent fasting, something like that. Write a letter to a loved one, an actual old school letter. All, there's just the lots and lots of things that you can do to add into your active recovery routine. That's the key, is you're actively recovering, you're not practicing self-care. So if you like this video, if you like this episode, make sure you like it, make sure you subscribe and follow, and down below, like I talked about, there's a membership available where you get a lot of access to a lot of different things in a crawl, walk, run fashion, and it's all about results. So sign up down there. I also have a playbook available for leading through chaos and through VUCA times, all of those other things, and watch you on the next one.